Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak at this meeting. Today, I would like to present our paper "Cloud Prediction Based on the Combination of Optic Flow and Deep Learning." My presentation will cover these aspects. First, I will introduce the research background about the advantages of laser communication and why we need cloud prediction in laser communication. Secondly, in the related work parts, I will an analyze three traditional ways of cloud prediction in weather forecast domain. Thirdly, I will explain our cloud prediction model in detail. Finally, I will describe our experimental process and show the results of our experiments. First, I will introduce the research backgrounds about the advantages of laser communication and why we need cloud prediction in laser communication. Laser communication is a kind of wireless communication which uses optical signal as a carrier to transmit information directly in the atmosphere. With the advantages of the large communication capacity and strong confidentiality, laser communication has a wide application potential in satellite-to-ground communication. However, satellite-to-ground laser communication has a problem of being susceptible to specific atmospheric environments compared to satellite to satellite laser links satellite to ground laser links have to pass through the atmosphere during which the laser transmission signal would be easily affected by atmospheric environments such as clouds fog haze and so on this complex atmospheric environment will attenuate the laser transmission signal severely and even cause communication interruption. As a result, in satellite to ground laser communication, we must take the influence of different atmospheric environments into consideration. In this case, if the condition of cloud clusters around the laser links can be obtained in advance, we will get to know important prior information about whether the construction of a specific laser communication link is suitable and we will be able to predict the quality of the link, thus guaranteeing the stability of the uninterrupted satellite to ground laser communication. Such a task of extrapolating future cloud conditions from the past trends of cloud change can be termed as cloud prediction. Then, I will analyze three traditional ways of cloud prediction in weather forecast domain. In weather forecast domain, radar echo image extrapolation is a main approach of nowcast. Many typical methods of radar echo extrapolation have been proposed, including the Cetroid tracking method, the cross-correlation extrapolation method, and the optical flow extrapolation method. The core idea of all these three typical methods is to find the corresponding relationship between the frames at the adjacent time. The centroid tracking method tries to identify the monomous and then scans the images at the adjacent times to match and track the target monomous. However, this algorithm is only suitable for images with easily identified target monomers, as the target monomers on most of our cloud images are complex and hard to be identified. The centroid tracking method has limitations on our cloud prediction. The cross-correlation extrapolation method first divides the image region into several small regions and then calculates the correlation coefficient between the small regions at the adjacent time. The corresponding relationship of the regions at the adjacent time is determined by the maximum correlation coefficient. However, the cross-correlation extrapolation method often fails when the image motion is fast. As the motion of cloud tends to be fast, this method also has limitations on our cloud prediction. The optical flow extrapolation method makes use of the uh, optic flow to track the image motion. Optic flow is the instantaneous velocity field of a moving object. It can be used to calculate the next position of the target point. It has been proved that the optical flow method has advantages over the other two methods above. Garner-Farbeck's algorithm is used to calculate dense optic flow. The optical flow of all pixels in the image is calculated. 
Fallback optical flow method is a gradient-based method. In this method, the image gradient and the local optical flow is assumed to be constant. Fallback optical flow method is a very suitable optical flow extrapolation method for weather radar alcohol extrapolation at present. However, the optical flow extrapolation method also has limitations on our cloud prediction. The optical flow method requires the image to follow the assumption of the gray invariance, while in fact the brightness of the target point is constantly changing because the actual cloud change with time is often accompanied by generation, development, weakening, and dissipation. As a result, when the moving speed of clouds is fast and the time interval is long, the prediction error rate of this method can still be large. So, how can we improve the traditional methods of the cloud prediction? Now I will explain our cloud prediction model in detail. In this paper, we decided to improve the optical flow extrapolation method by combining it with convolutional neural networks, which is one of the most representative networks in deep learning used for tasks of prediction. Our cloud prediction model is based on deep voxel flow, which can also be termed as DVF. DVF is an end-to-end -end CNN design for video frame synthesis. Compared to optical flow extrapolation method and a simple CNN-based model without using the optic flow, DVF can synthesize the next video frame with higher quality and accuracy with the input of former two consecutive frames. The structure of DVF in comp is composed of two parts. The first part is the convolutional encoder-decoder used to predict voxel flow. And the second part of DVF is the volume sampling layer used to synthesize the predictive frame by bilinear interpolation, which with pre predict voxel flow and the previous two frames. Instead of using CNN to predict and output the optical flow itself, the voxel flow vector across space and time in the input cloud images is used to form an intermediate layer in DVF, which means the correctness of the optical prediction will never be directly tested, and the output of DVF is a predictive frame, and we only have to directly consider the correctness of the predicted frame. Because of the superiority of DVF in the video prediction task, we adopt DVF to our prediction model. And by using DVF for multiple times to iterate the input cloud images and T second and T plus 25 second, we can get the predicted cloud frames during the next 100 seconds. Now, I will explain voxel flow in detail. The optical flow is a 2D factor describing instantaneous velocity of a point. Accordingly, uh, the optic flow field is a 2D vector field which reflects the gray change trend of each point in the image and can be regarded as an instantaneous wave field generated by the pixel points with gray level moving on the image plane. And uh, in a word, the information contained in the 2D vector field is the instantaneous velocity vector information of each image point, and such information can be termed as spatial information. However, the spatial information is not enough to measure spatial temporal sequences, such as the video frames and our cloud images. Spatial temporal sequences not only have the spatial information, but also have the temporal information. The task of spatial temporal sequence prediction has to take both spatial information and temporal information into consideration. The works flow adds the temporal dimension to the original two-dimensional optical flow. It is a per-pixel 3D vector across space and time. The works flow field is on a 2D grid of integer target pixel location. The works flow field F can be expressed as delta X, delta Y, and delta T. The first and second dimension of F represents optical flow from the target frame to the next frame. It can be understood as a spatial component of the voxel flow. Especially, 
The optic flow is assumed to be locally linear and temporarily symmetric between two consecutive frames. In this case, we will be able to find the location of a target pixel point in previous two frames. Let the coordinates of the target pixel point be x, y. Then we can get its coordinates in previous two frames as x minus 2 delta x, y minus 2 delta y, and x minus delta x, y minus delta y. Moreover, the temporal component of voxel flow f is a linear blend weight between the previous two frames. In computer vision, this temporal component is also called masks. When we use a selected image to cover the processed image to control the region of image processing, so the selected image is called a mask. And uh, the mask is a, a binary image composed of 0 and 1. When a mask is applied to a processed image, the 1 value region is processed, while the 0 value region which is covered will not be processed. In a word, the focus flow is composed of the spatial information f-motion and the temporal information f-mask. To reflect the concept of the voxel flow more vividly, we visualize it on our cloud image dataset. Specifically, we visualize the ground truth cloud images which have different cloud forms and their f-motion and f-mask, which are predicted by the DVF. Visualization of the optical flow is achieved by using flow field color coding. In this method, a flow direction is encoded with color and magnitude is encoded with color intensity. And we use heat map to visualize F mask. So the connection between F mask and the previous two frames can be vividly showed. And uh, the convolutional encoder decoder architecture is used uh, to predict the voxel flow with the input of two previous frames. It is in fact a kind of UNET architecture. UNET is composed of two parts. The first part of UNET is used for feature extraction and the second part is for up sampling. As the whole structure of it is like the English letter U, it is termed as UNET. The feature extraction part of the network contains four convolution layers and three max pooling layers. We will get four feature maps of different size as 256 times 256, 128 times 128, 64 times 64, and 32 times 32. The convolution kernel sizes are 5 times 5, 5 times 5, and 3 times 3 respectively. Then, in the up sampling part, we first do deconvolution on the 32 times 32 feature map to get the 64 times 64 feature map. The 64 times 64 feature map is concatenated with the previous 64 times 64 feature map. Such concatenating action will better maintain the spatial temporal spatial information. Then we do convolution and upsampling on the concatenated feature map to get the 128 times 128 feature map. And then we do the same thing to get the 256 times 256 feature map. Finally, through a bottleneck layer, we get the predictive voxel flow, which has a size of 3 times 256 times 256. And the volume sampling layer in DVF is used to synthesize the predictive frame by trilinear, by trilinear uh, interpolation. The inputs of the volume sampling layer are the voxel flow generated by the convolutional encoder decoder and the two previous frames, and the output is a predictive frame. The volume sampling function samples colors by interpolating within an optical flow aligned video volume computed from input X. In the paper video frame synthesis using deep voxel flow, the author has used the mathematical expressions to explain the volume sampling function in detail. Here, we use Python code to interpret the function of this volume sampling layer in a brief way. Firstly, we have to use f-motion to find the relationship between the output grid and their corresponding locations in the inputs. Then we will Feel the pixel value of the corresponding position in the input into the output grid. As there are two input frames, so we will get two interpolation results. Finally, we can use the F mask to combine two interpolation results. Specifically, we can multiply the interpolation result of the first frame uh, with mask and multiply the interpolation result of the second frame with one minus mask. 
Then I will describe our experimental process and show the results of our experiments. We use the cloud image dataset collected by our laboratory. Using the infrared imager, our laboratory collected cloud image sequences over a specific area of Nanjing in March 2019. Cloud images were taken every 5 seconds, and the cloud images collected are all grey images with a resolution of 720 times 480. In the data preprocessing part, we resize them to 256 um, times 256. In this experiment of cloud prediction, we sample the cloud sequences every five images, which means the time interval between two cloud images in our sampled image sequences is 25 seconds. We do this because the cloud motion change is relatively slow when it is compared to the image motion in many live scenes. By lengthening the time interval between sampled cloud images, we can get more obvious cloud motion changes for model training, although this will make it more challenging to train the DVF. For sampled image sequences in the training set, every three consecutive images make up a training data. The first and second images ser serve as the input of DVF, and the third one serves as the label. For sampled image sequences in the testing set, every six consecutive images make up a testing data. The first and the second cloud images serve as the input of our cloud prediction model, and the following four cloud images serve as the ground truth. And we use MSE loss as our loss function, and we use Adam as the optimizer. The original learning rate is uh, 0 0.0001, and we adjust it dynamically in the training process. The best size is set to be 32. And we use MSE, PSNR, SSIM to evaluate the testing result of our cloud prediction model. These three indexes are the main indexes for image quality evaluation. We compile the results of our cloud prediction model with the optical extrapolating methods using Ghana Farmback's algorithm. From the results, we can see that our cloud prediction model is better than the optical extrapolating method in all these three indices. As the prediction time step increases, our model keeps a higher prediction accuracy and quality than the optical flow extrapolation method. Moreover, we can see from the line chart that with the increase of the prediction time step, the advantage of our model becomes bigger and bigger uh, compared to the optical flow extrapolation method. Then we select prediction results of different cloud conditions in the testing set and visualize them. And uh, as is shown in the chart, Prediction by our cloud prediction model is in the line of prediction 1. Prediction by the optical flow extrapolation is in the line of prediction 2. Ground truth in the third line. Also, to better show the difference between the prediction and the ground truth, we visualize the difference images between the prediction result and the ground truth. And according to the visualized testing results, we can observe that our cloud prediction model can predict the location of cloud clusters with higher quality and accuracy than the optical flow extrapolation method. Finally, I would like to make a conclusion with my presentation. In this paper, in order to deal with the problem of satellite-to-ground laser communication being susceptible to specific atmospheric environments, we propose a cloud prediction model based on the combination of optical flow and deep learning to predict future and cloud images. Uh, our model is based on DVF, and by using DVF for multiple times to iterate the input cloud images, we can predict cloud images during the next 100 seconds. And uh, our experimental result Results show that compared to the optical flow extrapolation method, uh, our cloud prediction model can predict future cloud images with higher quality and accuracy. For future work, firstly, we consider adding a cloud image preclassification model, and uh, moreover, we'll do more research to improve the structure of the present cloud prediction model. That's all. Thank you.